Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inizor Education. Um, we continue um, solving different problems which are somehow not exactly typical problems which usually are solved in school. The typical, pro typical problems are those which basically are verifying how well you know the theory. Um, these problems which I am uh, putting in the course called Math Plus and Problems, these problems are not really typical in this sense. They require you some kind of ingenuity, creativity, thinking basically to come up with a solution which is not part of whatever you were presented in a theoretical part of the course. Now, the, this particular course, Math Plus and Problems, is presented on Unizor.com and I do suggest you to watch all these lectures from that website. Uh, first of all, there are pre prerequisites. Uh, on the website there is a Math for Teens course which basically gives you all the theory pertaining to regular high school um, uh, course of mathematics. Um, also there is a course called Physics for Teens and, and um, Relativity for Teens, I mean if you are interested. So there are some other courses on the same website. Now what's important uh, about any course presented on Unizor.com is, well there is a basically some kind of a table of contents. Uh, it's hierarchically organized. Lectures are um, ordered properly in a logical sequence, so whatever I'm presenting in one lecture will be used in subsequent. Um, also, every lecture has detailed uh, notes, which basically are like textbook, if you wish. There are exams, which you can take as many times as you want. Um, now, the site is totally free, uh, there are no advertisements, so nothing can really distract you from, from the process of studying. Okay, now, back to the problem which I wanted to present today. It's uh, related to uh, certain property of certain functions, so that's why I categorize it as algebra and the name of the number of the program is 0, 1, so this is Algebra 0, 1. It's a one problem, relatively simple one, but it really um, gives you some flavor um, that there are problems which are not really properly covered in, in, in the regular course, uh, and they do require you some kind of thinking about. Okay, so what's the problem? Now, there is a function x squared minus a times x plus a. So, a represents any real number. Now, what, what does it mean that there is a function which depends on some kind of a which can be any real number? Well, this equation actually defines a set of functions. For a is equal to 0, it's one function. It's y is equal to x squared. For a uh, equal to 1000, let's say, it's another function. It's y equals x squared minus 1000 x plus 1000. So this is a family of functions, as we are saying. Okay. Now, what's important is that if you will graph a few of these uh, functions, representatives of this family. Let's say we start with a is equal to zero. What do we have? Well, we have a parabola. So let's do a parabola. Okay. Now let's have uh, a is equal to two. You have y is equal to x squared minus two x plus two, which is the same as x minus one squared plus 1, right? This is x squared minus 2x plus 1, and another one gives me 2. Now, what is this? This is the same kind of parabola, but shifted to the right by 1 and up by 1. So it will be some, somewhere here. So they're crossing in point 1, 1. 
let's take another parabola let's say a is equal to 3 so we have y y is equal to x squared minus 3 x plus 3 which is what x minus 1.5 square this is by x minus 3 x plus uh, 225 plus 0 0.75 something like this if I'm not mistaken which means one and a half shifted to the right and 0 0.75 somewhere here so it's parabola something like here what's interesting you see this is a point which is kind of common to these three parabolas and now the problem first problem actually there are two problems the first problem is find the point on the plane where all these parabolas are going through regardless of the value of a like in this case we have uh, a is equal to 0, 2 and 3 and they look like on my very imperfect picture they look like they are crossing at point 1, 1 now now you have to prove it basically is well you, you can formulate it this way is there a point on the plane which is common for all these parabolas and if it is what is it so that's basically the point well how can we find this particular point well very easy I mean let's just take a couple of parabolas for a couple of different values of a and see if there are any points which they cross and then we will check it for some others in general way so in this particular case let's just concentrate on these two so these two seem to be crossing at point one one so let's just check what if x is equal to one and check the value of the function y for any a so y in this case is equal to 1 square minus a times 1 plus a right well as we see a and a is and a, y is equal to 1 so what we have to, uh, what we actually have proven that the point x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 1 which is this point is common for any parabola from this family no matter what a is if x is equal to 1 y will be equal to 1 which means all these parabolas all these functions graph, graphs of these functions they are going through the point 1 1 ok now this is kind of um, maybe not exactly direct way of proving it we can prove it many different ways for example instead of two concrete values and then checking if this works for anything else let's just take two completely different values let's say y is equal to x squared minus a1 x plus a2 and we are looking for uh, sorry a1 and we are looking for another function from the same family We are looking for such an x which produces the same result for y in both cases. Well, if x is the same and y is the same, let's subtract them. What do we have? 0 equals 0 uh, minus a1 minus a2 x plus a1 minus a2 from which follows 0 goes out, 0 goes out we can uh, cancel a1 and we will have x is equal to 1 as a solution to this equation for x so as we see we can put x is equal to 1 we can find x is equal to 1 even from some kind of a general consideration not exactly two concrete values of a
So it all goes through the same way. So all these parabolas are going through the point 1, 1. x is equal to 1, y is equal to 1. So that's my first problem related to this particular thing. A little bit more maybe unusual result would be the result of the second problem. So the second problem for the same kind of um, is, is as follows. Consider the vertices of all these parabola. In this case it's this one, this one, this one, and all other. Proof that all these vertices are actually lying on some parabola, which should probably look something like this. Now, this is very non-trivial result, which can be very simply obtained, but uh, personally I would not expect that all the parabolas of this particular family would have the vertices forming another parabola. Well, let's try and prove it. Let's start from the general case. If you have uh, the quadratic function, any quadratic function, where is its vertex? Well, for those who remember it from the course of mathematics, it's x is equal to minus b divided by 2a. For those who don't remember, and that actually includes myself, I do know the only formula which I know, which I remember actually, about quadratic equation is the formula for its roots. And the vertex is actually in the middle between the roots, right? So if you have some kind of parabola, these are two roots, x crossing. The vertex is also always in, in, in between. Uh, right in the middle between these two points and they do remember the formula for roots which is minus b plus minus square root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2a so the um, middle point is you just add these two things and divide it by 2 right if you will add these two things and divide it by 2 this thing dis disappears and you will have minus b divided by 2a so that's the formula for x coordinate of the vertex. Now, um, what's the y coordinate? Well, we don't really need to go with the y coordinate in general case, or we can say we can only consider the family of parabolas which we have. In this particular case, a, the coefficient at x is equal to 1, coefficient at b is equal to minus a, the coefficient at c is equal to a. So minus b divided by 2a is minus minus a divided by 2, which is a divided by 2. Okay. Now, this is a coordinate, let's call it x0. It's a coordinate of the vertex of any of these parabolas. That x coordinate. Now, what's y coordinate? Well, let's substitute this into, we will have a squared divided by 4 minus a times this, a squared divided by 2 and plus a, and it's equal to this is minus a squared divided by 4 plus a. So we have x and y coordinates of the vertex of this parabola. This is x coordinate and this is y coordinate. So as we see, x and y coordinates are parametrically given by the value of a. But if you would like to know what kind of a curve it produces this type of parametric definition of our point. x is equal to some function of a and y is equal to some function of a. We actually need to 
converted into form as a function, like y is equal to some kind of function of x, then we can judge what exactly this particular curve is. Well, how to find from parametric definition of x and zero, uh, x and y, how to find the dependency from them. Well, we'll just exclude a from these two equations and resolve a uh, y in terms of of x. How can we do it? Well, I will find a from here as function of x and substitute it to this. So a is equal to from this to x zero, and therefore y zero is equal to minus a squared divided by four two x. Uh, zero square, that's four x zero square divided by four, that's minus x zero square, and plus a, which is two the plus two x zero. So basically, the equation, uh, sorry, it's, that's y. Okay, so this is the equation of the dependency between y and x, where y and x are vertices or of, of parabolas uh, which belong to our family. And as you see, this is a quadratic dependency. This is definitely a parabola, which may look actually like this. Now, why it looks like this? Well, first of all, since this is minus, so the horns of parabola are downwards, obviously. Now we can find where are the x crossing, the roots of this parabola. Well, the roots of this parabola is when y is equal to 0. If y is equal to 0, we will have minus x0 squared plus 2x0 is equal to 0. Uh, so obviously, first root is s, x is equal to 0. Now we can take x out, and that would be another root would be 2. So it goes through points 0 and 2. Now the vertex will be in, the in between and at, at point x is equal to 1, so this will be actually the vertex. And the value of parabola at this point uh, is exactly that common value which we had. It's 1, point, it's one, one. It's x is equal to 1, y is equal to 1. If you will substitute 1 here, you will have minus 1 plus 2, which is 1. So this is a parabola which has vertex at 1, 1, two roots at 0 and 2, horns are down. So this is a parabola on which all the vertices of these parabolas, family of parabolas, um, are located. And as I, as I say, that's a little bit unusual result. I quite frankly did not expect it. Just looking at this, um, you don't really realize that all the vertices of all these um, different parabolas are belong to one particular parabola, which looks like this. And that's an equation of this parabola. Well, that's, that's the whole problem which I couple of problems actually which I wanted to present to you. Um, are they unusual? Well, I think it's not really like part of the general course of, uh, of uh, uh, algebra. In the general course they will probably talk different kinds of equations and uh, how to solve these equations. That's basically the standard course of uh, um, mathematics which is presented at school. Now this property of this particular kinds of parabolas is, as I said, unusual and it requires certain research. So that's why I presented this problem as part of the, this course called Mass Plus and Problems. Okay, that's it for today. I do suggest you to read the notes for this lecture. They have a much better graph than, than I presented. So you go to uh, unisor.com, you choose the course Mass Plus and Problems. And uh, within that course, you have algebra, geometry, etc. So you choose algebra, and uh, algebra 01 will be on the next menu. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much, and good luck. <laughs>